Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Cynthia Holt, and I'm the uh, Executive Director for the Council of Atlantic Academic Libraries. I'd like to welcome you all here to this uh, call webinar, uh, Indigenous Spine Labels, a collaboration with students. Uh, I just start to start with a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, we do have some people coming in from low bandwidth areas. So if you are not speaking or asking a question, if you could please uh, mute your mics and turn off your cameras. Uh, you are perfectly uh, 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 welcome to turn your camera back on and unmute yourself if you need to ask a question um, during the question in at the Q&A session. Uh, but uh, just to please keep them uh, your cameras off during uh, uh, during the, the, the presentation. Uh, at that, this point, I'd like to turn the session over to Samantha Reed, who is the Instructional Services Librarian at St. of X. Um, Samantha is also the co-chair of the Call uh, CVPA Indigenous uh, Knowledge Committee. Um, she is going to be moderating today, and also she will be welcoming Kara. Samantha. Thank you, Cynthia. I'll start with the land acknowledgement. Tall CBPA represents member libraries across the region, all of whom sit on the unceded and traditional territories of First Peoples. In Newfoundland and Labrador, our libraries sit on the homelands of the Inuit of Nunastuviet and Nunatukuvit, uh, the Innu of Natasinan, and the Beothic and the Mi'kmaq peoples. In Prince Edward Island in Nova Scotia, we find our friends and colleagues situated on the territory of the Mi'kmaq. In New Brunswick, libraries are found on the land of the Wulastuliak, the Mi'kmaq and Passamaquoddy peoples. We at Cal CBPA wish to express our sincerest gratitude to the First Peoples who share their ancestral homelands with us all. Today, we have Kara Thompson, who recently took the position of the Liaison Librarian for Health Sciences in the School of Nursing at Cape Breton University. But previously, she had worked for many years as the campus librarian of the NSCC Marconi campus. And she will be talking about an experience she had while she was there today. So over to you, and I look forward to hearing you speak. If anyone has questions, we'll save them to the end, I think, most likely. Perfect. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I just have some slides I'm going to share. Is everybody able to see that? <clears throat> yes. Perfect. Thank you. So, uh, hi. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and hear about my spine label project. So, um, as they mentioned, I'm now with Cape Breton University, but this project came about uh, in my role as the campus librarian at NSCC Marconi here in Sydney. Um, and it was tied to NSCC as a whole trying to integrate uh, truth and reconciliation into what we did as a library service. So this started um, during the 2018-2019 academic year, because you're about to find out COVID threw a wrench in the middle of all of this, as it did for everyone. So during the year, I was approached uh, by Heather McIsaac, uh, who is an instructor in our Applied Media Communication Arts course, uh, or AMCA. And she asked if I had a project I would like done. Uh, her students were working on a cultural competence module and uh, as part of their curriculum and the faculty wanted to know if there was any active sort of real life uh, way they could do this. And I'd been mulling over sort of everything that came out of the truth and reconciliation uh, talks and some of the uh, you know resources that we had talked about. And the first thing I did was uh, in our campus, we cover a lot of different topics. We have social services, disability services support. We have trades. We have all kinds of uh, business, all kinds of different areas. And our Indigenous materials were kind of spread throughout that. Um, it wasn't always easy to kind of recognize what material was first voice Indigenous, what wasn't. So what I did originally was I pulled all of our Indigenous materials and created, if you look at the bottom photo there, a little truth and reconciliation collection. And it was up around the new bookshelves and it was just a way for students to browse everything that we had kind of in one fell swoop. And this was really successful. I had this up for a couple of years. 
and students would browse it. It was a really great resource. Students who wanted to do topics on Indigenous subjects, I could just kind of take them there. We would look through, we'd talk about the resources that were there. Um, we have a really strong collection of Indigenous materials. Um, but eventually those were going to have to all go back into the collection. If you're not aware, NSCC Marconi campus in a few months is going to be known as NSCC Sydney Waterfront Campus. They're moving to a brand new facility down on the waterfront with an amazing library space. And all of those materials were kind of have to go back into the collection. And I wanted a way to bring attention to them. And I kind of thought about spine labels. I was used to seeing them in the public library. And I went and I did some searching to see if I could purchase them from Brodart or any other companies. And I wasn't really happy with what I found. It was a little bit, felt a little stereotypical to me, the images that were used. Um, so I asked the instructor, well, is, could your students design a spine label for me? And we talked about what a spine label was and how they could integrate that into what they were doing with their cultural competency program. So the first thing I did was I met with the entire class. So they came down to the library. We looked at the sort of truth and reconciliation collection I had separated out. And we I kind of re reiterated to them what I just talked to all of you about, um, that I wanted something that wasn't stereotypical. Um, and just to give you a heads up, I did take a look before I started putting this presentation together. And there are some really great spine labels out there, Indigenous spine labels now. Uh, Good Minds has some really beautiful ones, as does Strong Nations, Car McLean. So these are things you can get now. But at the point that I was looking at these back in 2018, there really wasn't anything. So what I asked them to do was I explained sort of the sizing of the spine label and how it worked. I had some examples to show them. I asked that they create something with an image that wasn't stereotypical or appropriative. I wanted it to be visually appealing. I wanted it to catch the eye while you were walking through uh, the stacks. And I wanted it to reflect Indigenous culture um, and, and all the better if it was sort of Mi'kmaq culture as well. So the students met with me and they went off and they worked on their projects and they submitted them back to me. And when they came back uh, and were submitted to me, I actually met with our campus elder, Danny Paul, and the two of us reviewed all of the students' submissions. Now, unfortunately, Danny passed away in December of 2023. So having this opportunity to spend this time with him while we looked over the student projects and to hear his stories was a really phenomenal experience that means is more meaningful to me now than ever. Um, he took the time to tell me the creation story, the story of Turtle Island, and explain the symbolism and importance of the turtle. Um, it really was one of my nicest meetings with him ever, and we talked a lot, we met a lot, but this was truly just a really once-in-a-lifetime experience. So the image that was selected is the design you see on the right. It was the turtle, and it was designed um, by Ricky Lee Christmas, who's from Escazoni here in Cape Breton. Um, Ricky Lee and I have a long relationship uh, back when she did motorcycle power products originally at NSCC and then came back to do AMCA. Um, she is the most glorious photographer. She takes amazing images. Um, and I was really happy that it was her project that, that kind of uh, was selected by the elder. So this is Ricky's description of what this image stands for. So the turtle is part of my culture and one of my favorite creatures. It's a sacred symbol to the Mi'kmaq and has many meanings. It represents one of the seven sacred teachings, truth, and signifies good health and a long life. The colors signify the medicine wheel and embody the four directions, north, south, east, and west. The shell represents perseverance and protection in the continent of North America, the home of indigenous peoples. We spread it from the back of Turtle Island, which makes us indigenous. So this was the description that Ricky Lee gave um, when she did that. So in October of 2019, we did a launch of the spine label at NSCC Marconi as part of Mi'kmaq History Month. Um, it was actually in October of 2021. Um, we had a nice reception. Ricky Lee was so excited. Um, it was a really wonderful day. 
And all NSCC campus libraries utilize the Indigenous spine label to indicate a first voice Indigenous contents within our collections. Uh, so this again is another example of what that looks like. Um, we printed the spine labels in-house. We just purchased them from Car McLean, I do believe, uh, or Brodart, and we print them off as, as they're needed and they're added to materials as they're cataloged. So since then, a lot has happened. Um, when we, when Ricky Lee created this and NSCC libraries decided to use it, um, one of the things um, my director Andrea Stewart decided um, that I really loved and I'm really happy we did this is Ricky Lee kept the copyright to this image. Uh, we paid a fee to utilize the image on our spine labels, but the actual copyright is with Ricky Lee Christmas. Um, so we had a lovely report to the community in 2021 through NSCC that talked through all of the process, uh, interviewed Ricky Lee, talked about her experiences at the school and her experience with this project. Um, <clears throat> another fantastic article was published by the CBC in 2022 on this. And Ricky Lee has actually been contacted by libraries across Canada to access this design and create spine labels. Uh, the one that you can see there is Lakeland Regional Library. It's a little screen cap from their Facebook page. Uh, they paid Ricky Lee as well uh, to provide access so they could create and use the spine labels in their collection. And just in the last few months, uh, one of the schools with the Halifax Regional Centre for Education has also um, begun to use the spine labels as well. Also through this, through the story from the CBC, an artist in Australia contacted Ricky Lee and asked if he could use her image to create a drum utilizing that same image, um, which she was really excited about. So she got to kind of work with him in working on that. Uh, a couple of the references here, if you do want to take a look at uh, the sort of uh, community release that we did. Uh, the link is there as well. And then it was Christian Roach back in February of 2022 who did a really great article from the CBC. Um, we were hoping that Ricky Lee could join me today. Unfortunately, she's just started a new job uh, at the long-term care facility in Escazoni, so she wasn't able to make it. Um, but she was so happy that you were interested in hearing about her work and what she did. And if any of you are interested in utilizing the spine label in your library, you can either contact me if you want to um, or contact Ricky Lee directly at rickyleechristmas at hotmail.com. You can contact her through that email. So that is kind of everything about how I got to where I am now with this. Um, it was a really fantastic experience. Um, Ricky Lee is a very quiet uh, person and to see her come out of the shell during the whole process of this through this sort of creation, um, you know, seeing her shine at, at the uh, event where we kind of promoted this province wide, um, and just seeing how this has continued to impact her life in the years since she graduated, she actually graduated back in 2019, um, has been really wonderful to see. She's such a fantastic individual um, and deserves all the good things that come her way. Um, so I don't know if anyone had any questions or anything about anything else that went on with this. Hey, yeah, I, I'll start us off. Um, I probably okay. was thinking. I was just wondering. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about the selection for the books that the mm -hmm. label was on? So, I know obviously mm -hmm. of an Indigenous person, but um, yeah. where, like, talk a little bit about like things that might not be obvious um, for that selection. So uh, they are meant to be Indigenous first voice. That's the policy that NSCC Library Services set up. Um, I've also used them on the truth and reconciliation materials. Um, it really is just to make those resources related to Indigenous content pop. Um, but our policy within NSCC was that it would be first voice Indigenous materials. Nicole? I th oh, you're muted, Nicole. 
Thank you. Uh, I just have a follow up question to the the selection of the materials. I'm wondering if when you created that truth and reconciliation collection, was there any easy way to filter for that or did you just have to comb your collection? Um, I'll be honest, um, I have an undergraduate degree in sociology. A lot of the materials came from readings I did while I was a student um, and keeping up in the topic area. Um, as well as recommendations from other librarians uh, with an interest in the area. Um, a lot of them are sort of what I think of as a core list. So there was a lot of materials around residential schools, missing and murdered Indigenous women. Um, Danny Paul, Dr. Danny Paul's uh, We Were Not the Savages is to me a must read for all Canadians, um, but that's my personal feeling. Um, but the it sort of came through organically over a decade or so of working there with suggestions and new publications. Um, I was part of the team that worked on the Indigenous Subject Guide through NSCC as well. So that was a way to keep up with materials. Um, also, um, the Marconi campus has one of the largest populations of Indigenous students in any of the NSCC campuses. We're here in Unamagi. Um, so about 13% of our students are Indigenous at the Sydney campus. And some of the suggestions came from them. We've been really lucky to have some students from Rankin Inlet, uh, from Nunavut, who came to do programming as well. Um, and I was able to connect with them and get some recommendations from them as well. Uh, the collection does tend to kind of steer to sort of Eastern Canada, um, but we do have some, uh, some more sort of national focused materials as well. Thank you. No problem. Hi, this is April, also a librarian at NSCC. Um, I think one thing to speak to about that is that we haven't really found a super easy way to determine who who um, authors are in terms of first voice. Sometimes that mm -hmm. does just require some hunting through the internet and, uh, you know, sometimes authors notes and, and things like that help. But um, yeah, in terms of things like vendor catalogs, mm -hmm there doesn't seem to be a super easy way to determine that without without doing a bit of extra legwork. Um, one thing we found, so when I initially started here a number of years ago, I, I came over to Cape Breton University to the Mi'kmaq Resource Center, and in talking to the staff there, one of the suggestions they made that I, I then took to, to our policies as well is um, when Indigenous materials are published, you need to kind of buy them immediately because a lot of times they aren't republished, um, especially if it's something really uniquely local. Uh, sometimes there's only one print run of it. So we do purchase quite a bit in print uh, for our Indigenous materials to make sure that we have a solid collection of materials that may not get printed again. Um, it does happen. We have um, one of the things in, I know in the Marconi collection is a Mi'kmaq dictionary uh, that had one print run. Um, if we hadn't purchased when we did, we wouldn't be able to have a copy because a lot of times it's really hard to get second editions. I've spent the last 10 years trying to get my hands on, just, on Justice Denied, uh, the book about Donald Marshall Jr. that's no longer in print and it's almost impossible to find a secondhand copy. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're purchasing in these areas. You want to buy when you can. Um, those are some excellent points. So I'll just read. Mm -hmm. There's another comment in the yeah. chat. Thank you for this presentation. I love the spine label. One thing I would note is that NSCC also created a poster showcasing the spine label. Yes. And we still have it up in the library as is. Uh, it's in itself a beautiful piece. Yeah. yeah. So our communications team uh, created a poster that has sort of the uh, turtle imagery on it and then a little bit of a brief description on it. Uh, those were printed off. I think they're like 11 by 17. So we have those framed and up in most of the campuses. And it's just another way to kind of uh, highlight it.
So did you do much promotion um, along, uh, like a, a lot, you had your little, your launch there mm -hmm. as well yep. at, at your campus, but was there much um, ongoing promotion that happened after the fact or was it just mostly centered around the launch itself? Uh, the launch, but also we did utilize the posters. Uh, we also had some material that went up on social media. So for those of you that aren't aware, NSCC is sort of spread out across the province. So uh, we had some materials done so that we could share it online. Um, really, uh, the sort of uh, community piece that NSCC wrote and put up um, really created a lot of interest. Um, and the CBC piece in particular has continually generated interest. It's usually what brings people to Ricky Lee. Um, and that's kind of where the public library and the sort of uh, school for center for education's kind of heard about it. Um, that's still, I believe CBC posted that again uh, for Indigenous History Month. Um, it kind of gets thrown out there quite frequently throughout the year. So it's just been a really great resource. And, and I really can't tell you enough what an impact this had on Ricky Lee. Um, you know, this was just a small school project. It was just gonna be an assignment that was done and it was done so well <clears throat> that I was able to take it to my manager, my director and make the suggestion that this was something we could use in the library system. Um, and with their support, we were able to kind of do that provincially. Um, so it was really, like I said, it was just one of those sort of happenstance. It was a conversation in the coffee line with the applied media instructor. Uh, and it's turned into something really fantastic um, and provided um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of really positive impact for Ricky Lee as an individual and as an artist and as a Mi'kmaq woman here in Unamagi. So now that you're at, uh, you've moved over to CBU, um, does CBU have any type of spine label that they use or is that uh, a discussion you intend to bring to your fellow librarians? Um, that is a discussion I've already had. I'm working on that. Uh, no, CBU doesn't have anything currently in place. So uh, I am looking at having CBU contact Ricky Lee and see if we can purchase uh, the rights to it as well. It really is a really fantastic re resource to kind of highlight things. Um, like I said, you know, the photos I had in the presentation, a lot of those, you know, books that were clearly together, um, but that spine label really does stand out. Uh, we had started to merge the collection back and um, it really does help just kind of pull the eye uh, to take a second look and see. Um, because a lot of these materials we have, um, uh, we have an indigenous business text that was written by an instructor here at CBU. We had that at NSCC. So that was in the business section. Um, we have some materials under trades. We had a lot of materials under health and healthcare, um, as well as sort of social sciences, general interests. So this is really just a way to highlight that. Um, and it was really beneficial. Um, a lot of our students utilized it when they were working on projects. Um, and um, a lot of our, our Indigenous students uh, really appreciated the effort that was taken to sort of highlight these materials and highlight their culture and uh, sort of highlight the people that write, uh, write about their lives. Well, I, for one, am certainly feeling inspired. Um, I wonder, does anyone have any other comments or questions? Does the NSCC use uh, other spine labels or is this like sort of? No, this is, this is uh, the only one that we're using currently. But like I said, uh, the public library in Manitoba that requested it 
clearly they use other spine labels as well because uh, they do their, their collection in genres. So um, they had a lot of positive feedback on this as well when they started utilizing it. And I highly encourage anyone who's interested, please reach out to Ricky Lee. Um, she uh, loves to hear from people. And um, this, uh, this has just been a really great experience for her. Um, perhaps you could put the email address on the screen again. I can. can type it in the chat, uh, just in case. I can put it in the chat. Yeah. No, Elizabeth, we haven't heard from any of the authors. I, I don't know if anyone's aware that it's kind of being used with their material. And like I said, um, a couple of weeks ago, I did another search for Indigenous spine labels, and there are some really great ones available now that were not available when I was looking originally. Um, Good Minds and Strong Nations have two that I really, really like. Um, uh, so those are options that are available as well. Well, maybe we could end it there if there are no other comments or questions. Um, I thank you very much. Uh, oh, no problem. Talking about something that is in a former position of yours, but um, as you said in your communication to me, you said this was the highlight of your career so far. It was. Uh, it was fantastic. So, yeah. It's wonderful. And to Ricky, hear about. Ricky Lee is a big part of that. Any of you that have the opportunity to interact with her will find out what a special person she is. She's extraordinary. Yeah, I think it's such a great way to, um, yeah, like you said, that books are can be in different locations in the library, yeah. and it's a way for us to focus on print too. I think we, I do think we need more of that, and um, yeah. also just a way to not segregate or like isolate the collection, but to make sure it's spread out and and just also highlight it at the same time. So, yeah. yeah. So thank you, everyone. I appreciate you all taking the time to listen to me talk about this. And as I said, um, either contact Ricky Lee directly or feel free to contact me. I'm happy to put you in touch with her.